In this lesson, we will examine some important properties of fractions. The first property is that any number n is equal to the fraction n over 1. So, for example, 5 is the same as 5 over 1, and 18 is equal to 18 over 1. Conversely, it is also true that 33 over 1 is equal to 33. Another important property is that any number n over 0 is undefined. In other words, we cannot assign a value to this fraction. Here's why. If we think of fractions as representing division, then dividing by 0 is the same as asking how many times 0 will divide into the numerator, and as you can see, this is impossible to compute. Another way to look at this is to consider the following example. When we take 6 and divide it by 2, we get 3. This also means that when we multiply 3 by 2, we get back to 6. So, if we want 6 over 0 to have some value, then it must also be the case that when we multiply that value by 0, we get back to 6. Since it's impossible to have such a number, we simply say that any number n over 0 is undefined. Alright, another property says that n over n is always equal to 1. Notice that we have the condition here that says n cannot equal 0, since 0 over 0 does not equal 1. In fact, 0 over 0 is undefined. Here are a few examples that demonstrate this property. Now another property says that 1 over some fraction, a over b, is equal to the fraction b over a. So, for example, 1 over 2 thirds is equal to 3 halves. Similarly, 1 over 11 ninths is equal to 9 elevenths. And 1 over 1 35th is equal to 35 over 1, which is equal to 35. In each case, notice that we are merely taking the fraction in the denominator and flipping it. Now this brings up an important definition. The reciprocal of a over b is b over a. In other words, the reciprocal of a fraction is the flipped over version of that fraction. Alright, another property is as follows. The fraction a over b times the fraction b over a is equal to 1. In other words, the product of a fraction and its reciprocal is 1. So 2 thirds times its reciprocal, 3 halves, equals 1. Similarly, 1 15th times 15 over 1 is equal to 1. And 93 over 14 times 14 over 93 equals 1. Now our next property deals with the consequences of increasing and decreasing the numerator and denominator of a fraction. To begin, if we take a fraction and make its numerator bigger, the effect is to increase the value of that fraction. For example, if we take the fraction 3 elevenths and increase the numerator to 4, the value of the fraction increases. In other words, 4 elevenths is greater than 3 elevenths. Conversely, if we take a fraction and make its numerator smaller, the effect is to decrease the value of that fraction. Now what about changing the denominator? Well, if we take a fraction and make its denominator bigger, the result is a decrease in the value of that fraction. For example, if we take the fraction 12 over 3 and increase the denominator to 4, the value of the fraction decreases. In other words, 12 over 4 is less than 12 over 3. Conversely, if we take a fraction and make its denominator smaller, the result is an increase in the value of that fraction. Okay, let's try a few examples. These two fractions have identical denominators, but their numerators are different. As such, we can use the properties to determine which fraction has the greater value. Since the fraction on the right has the bigger numerator, it must have the greater value. Now these two fractions have identical numerators, but their denominators are different. So once again, let's use our properties to determine which fraction has the greater value. Well, since the fraction on the left has the smaller denominator, it must have the greater value. Finally, in this example, the fraction on the right has the smaller denominator, so it must have the greater value. Okay, here are three more to practice with. See if you get the following results. Now, of course, how will all of this help us on the GMAT? Well, let's say we're working on a question, and we find that the answer is 360 over 88. 
but the answer choices require us to convert this answer into a decimal. Well, if we resort to using long division to make this conversion, we are wasting valuable time, since we should be able to make this conversion in under 5 seconds. Here's how. First recognize that 88 does not divide nicely into 360. Then ask, are there any numbers close to 88 that would divide nicely into 360? In this case, we should recognize that if the denominator were 90, then we would have 360 over 90, which is equal to 4. So since 88 is very close to 90, we know that when we convert 360 over 88 into a decimal, the result will be close to 4. This means we can already eliminate answer choices A, B, and C, since they are not remotely close to 4. Now since the denominator 88 is smaller than the other denominator 90, we can apply this rule to see that the value of 360 over 88 must be bigger than the value of 360 over 90. As such, 360 over 88 will be slightly more than 4, which we will denote as follows. Since the answer must be slightly more than 4, the answer here must be E. Okay, one last property. This one says that if we take a fraction and increase the numerator and denominator by the same amount, the value of the resulting fraction will be closer to 1. For example, if we take 2 over 7 and add 10 to the top and bottom, the resulting fraction, 12 over 17, is closer to 1 than 2 sevenths is. Furthermore, if we take 12 over 17 and add 1000 to its numerator and denominator, the resulting fraction is closer to 1 than 12 over 17 is. Similarly, if we take the fraction 11 over 3 and add 50 to the top and bottom, the resulting fraction 61 over 53 is closer to 1 than 11 over 3 is. And if we add 10,000 to the top and bottom of this fraction, the resulting fraction is even closer to 1. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned several important properties related to fractions.